Hi. Now that we deal with maximization problem, let's do one where we need to minimize the function subject to two conditions and of course a negative restriction. And look, we start as usual by uh, making a Lagrange function and we get that this is x minus 4 square plus y minus 4 square plus lambda 1 times 6 minus 2x uh, minus 3y plus lambda 2 uh, negative 12 plus 3x and plus 2y. Okay, so with this out of the way, the next step, of course, is to uh, state down uh, the Kuhn Tucker uh, conditions for minimum. Okay, and so first thing we need to do is to differentiate this function with respect to x. We get that this is 2x minus 8 minus 2 lambda 1 minus 3 uh, uh, minus, I'm sorry, plus 3 uh, lambda 2. And of course, this now needs to be bigger or equal to zero. Of course, assuming we also need to add that x must be bigger or equal to zero, and that due to complementary slackness, at least one of them needs to be equal to zero. Then we differentiate the function. With respect to y, we get that this is 2y minus 8, again, uh, minus 3 lambda 1 plus uh, 2 lambda 2, and this also needs to be bigger than 0, x, or bigger or equal to 0, y needs to be non-negative, and due to complementary slackness, one of the, of the two expressions need to be equal to zero. Then, of course, we need to uh, we need to differentiate the function with respect to lambda one and lambda two, which is very easy in this case, uh, well, as usual, because of course we get the restatement of the constraints, and this, of course, needs to be lower or equal to zero, lambda one needs to be non-negative, and one of them needs to be equal to zero. Finally, the last one, for lambda two, we get negative 12 plus three x plus two y needs to be lower or equal to zero, lambda one, uh, sorry, lambda two needs to be non-negative and complementary slackness condition. Okay, with those conditions we can start our trial and error approach. Okay, what can we start? Maybe a good idea to start would be to assume that both uh, conditions are binding. In those cases, we would get both alpha one and uh, lambda one and lambda two being bigger than zero. And look, under these conditions, if both conditions are binding, we can use uh, the two equations over here to build a system, right? And out of this system, we should be able. Uh, to calculate out what is going to be uh, uh, what is going to be x and y. Okay, so we've got 2x 
plus 3y equals to 6. Right, and just move it on the other side of the equation. And we've got also the 3x plus 2y equals to 12. Okay, now, due to, uh, the, due to the fact that we are not going to be solving this right now, let me just tell you that if you solve this system, you're going to get two answers. First one is 4 and 4 fifths, and the second one is uh, negative 1 and 1 fifth which happens to be lower than zero. We got a violation of the condition in the second line, which means that this is not an option. We should disregard the possibility that both conditions, both, uh, uh, both restrictions are blanking. So we need to start a little bit different. So what can we do? Well, now, maybe let's start with the fact that maybe x should be bigger than 0 and y should be bigger than 0. This is always a good option. Okay, so if x is bigger than 0 and y is bigger than 0, this will imply to us that the derivatives, the two derivatives, zx and zy, need to be uh, different uh, uh, need to be equal to zero. Okay, so let's use that. So we've got two x. We've got two x minus eight minus two lambda one plus three lambda two is equal to zero, and we've got a second equation. Then 2y minus 8 minus 3 lambda 1 plus 2 lambda 2 is equal to 0. And look, we can clearly see that, for example, we can get rid out of one of the lambdas. Let's say lambda 2. How to do it? There are plenty of ways. For example, I can multiply the first equation by 2. 4x minus 16 minus 4 lambda 1 plus 6 lambda 2 is equal to 0. And over here we would multiply by 3 and getting 6y minus 24 minus 9 lambda 1 plus 6 lambda 2 also equal to 0. And look, so what I can do is I can take this equation and subtract from it this equation. And let's see what I'm getting. I'm getting then uh, out of the two, I should get 4x, right, minus 6y, negative 16 plus 24 gives us 8, and uh, minus for lambda plus 9 uh, lambda 1, it gives us plus 5 lambda 1. And of course, lambda 2 are canceling each other out. Okay, but still we've got uh, one equation only and it has three variables, which is very problematic. So maybe the next thing. Uh, we could assume, for example, is that lambda 1 is equal to 0. Okay, in this case, this equation loses 5 lambda 1, right? So we get that this is 4x minus 6y equals to negative 8, or x minus 3 over 2y equals to negative 2. Okay, we are getting some. We still got, uh, we still have one equation, right, but we need a second one. 
So what can what else can we assume? Let's assume now that lambda 2 is different than 2. This, of course, implies that z lambda 2 needs to be equal to 0. So we're going to get a second equation. Okay, equation that we're going to get is going to be 3x plus 2y equals 12. Okay, and look, again, I can make a system out of these two equations. So I'm going to get x minus 3 over 2 y equals negative 2. And then 3x plus 2y equals 2 plus. Again, now, if we take this system and we're going to solve it, we're going to get that x is equal to 28 over 13 and y is equal to 30, 36 over 13, both of which are higher than 0. Okay, so those are pretty good candidates uh, for our solution. And look, if we know that, we can go one step further. What I can do now is that I can take x and y and I can substitute them in the equation, for example, for zx or zy, which we know are equal to 0. And also, I can substitute there lambda 1, which is equal to 0. If I do this, I'm going to get that lambda 2 is equal to 16 over 13, which is positive. And finally, we get uh, finally we get the full solution, keeping in mind, of course, that lambda one is zero. And this is how we get to the solution. We see that in order to minimize this function under this restriction in forms in the form of in inequalities, we need to set x to be 28 over 13 and y to be 36 over 13. Okay, now that you know how to do a maximization problem and you know how to do a minimization problem, there is only one more thing left to do. Practice and practice and practice. You need to do a lot of problems like these because uh, uh, those problems first will help you uh, will help you to simply get better at calculations, of course, but they will also help you to understand how does it work that when one uh, that for example when one lambda is zero, we need to have uh, and one restriction is not binding, while well, the other one that is not zero, the other one does. Okay, so now we know how to find those maxima and minima, and in the next video we're gonna learn, uh, we're gonna learn about whether they actually going to give us a maximum or minimum, or rather, under which conditions we can be certain of that. Plus, we're going to talk about constraint qualification, which is another issue we haven't touched upon over here. However, good news, everything that's going to be after that about nonlinear programming is not going to be on your test. This is all that's going to be on the test, you need to be able to solve these problems. Uh, however, the remaining conditions, which are very long and troublesome, uh, let's just say you just need to be made aware. Okay, thank you for your attention and see you in the next video. Take care.